after I had been there nine or ten months and uh, got younger bound, I was getting close to town ETS. I wanted to kind of stay on the safe side, so I begged him to give me a job as a truck driver to haul food. And hauling food, I had to go through the biggest city in the world, Way, Vietnam. And, and every time I go through Way, I have a hundred kids, they knew the food truck, they'd be robbing it as I go through. And it was one bridge, you had to wait till that bridge clear on one side, and then they flag you to cross, try to come from the other side. And by the time I get halfway across that bridge, <laughs> half the food would be gone. <laughs> that was the hardest thing I had to do, was try to keep enough food to get back with. It was beautiful. I loved to fly, I still love to fly. My first flight in the Hill helicopter, I was with an artillery unit. That's where I left Oklahoma, Post Hill, and I went to Vietnam, I joined a, a, as an F.O. And they would take us out and drop, and we'd observe and uh, pick us up in the morning. And it being all night scary, uh, when they pick us up in the morning, you would fly so high, you go to sleep, hang out in the wind, the wind blowing through your hair. That was good. I love that part about it. To this day, I want me a helicopter. But about First in country, I was with a unit, and uh, I stayed with them about three, four months, and they evacuated. They sent them to Korea, so I had to go with the 101 Eagles, Screaming Eagles. And I was a dog on uh, on there, uh, handling M60, for, and uh, stayed on there. That guy, the guy that was with me, he ETS. So they made me a crew chief. So I had to secure the helicopter, check it, and make sure it was flying, you know, everything every day before we go out. And I had, we had a lot of dangerous flights. You, know, you go out and you come back in, it'd be full of holes because it was mostly made out of paper then, you know, the shells, fiberglass, and paper, and the rudders so the bullets wouldn't break and bend, it would go straight through. And a lot of times we come in and uh, cut the thing off, a couple of times it happened to me, and soon the wind cut it up to our flop, the blades break off. They had so many bullet holes in it, they had to break. When the weight get on them down, they break. <laughs> yep. When without it, man, we just suffered so enough. Cause a lot of supplies, and during the monsoon time, rain, you in mud, and they drop supply. They pick up people, the injured. Also, they uh, come in. They had um, some of them had rockets on them, launchers, and they protect you a lot of time. Pick, you know, secure areas. They did a whole lot of work, a whole lot of work. Medivac, they, the, the injured, the sick. You know, they move stuff like artillery units, they carry the ammo and big old nets. They hook them in the net, load the net up, they hook to it, pick it up, take it out, way out. Well, and they could get places like in the mountains and stuff when I North Vietnam on the border. We was in the mountains and it was hard to, to get ammo up there. Of course, you had to drive up there, a truck. You just crawled up a hill with a load of, you know, ammo. But they could fly it in, and we shoot sometimes thousand rounds a day or more, according to what we, we got hit. Or we shot for the, protect some infantry out in, in the jungle somewhere. We'd uh, just maybe shoot 12, 1,500 rounds, the 105 Hollister, eight inch, 175s, they shoot pretty far, like 20 some miles. So they bring those big bullets to us and stuff. Powder, charges. They, 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 was, they were the backbone. <laughs>